Uh, hello, I hope you can hear me. Uh, perfect. So uh, I am uh, Michal Koutny. I uh, so actually, I this is me. Uh, I am Michal Koutny. Uh, I work at SUSE and uh, I concern myself with C groups, uh, with both sides from the kernel and the user space. And uh, today uh, I would like to talk with you about a particular problem on the user space side. Uh, and uh, some proposed solution, a proposed solution. Uh, so let's get to it. Uh, first, uh, some introduction uh, for the background. I see that uh, there are some people who may already be very, very familiar with this, but uh, for the generic audience, uh, System D has some way how the C group hierarchy is structured. And uh, it, there is one rule called uh, single writer rule that basically says that uh, parts of the hierarchy uh, must have clear owner that is responsible for the configuration of that. Uh, and uh, that would mean that because uh, the root, root higher, sorry, the root C group and the all the under, underneath is managed by system D. So that would mean that everything is managed by system D, but uh, it's maybe practical uh, to have uh, some different manager. Uh, so there comes the concept of delegation uh, here is the quote on the slide is a quote from the uh, from uh, man manual pages uh, that basically explains uh, what, what the delegation does that it allows to delegate the subtree uh, to some other entity and uh, it can manage both the controllers and the processes beneath the delegated subtree and it, uh, this applies both to service units and uh, scope units. So uh, uh, here uh, we will start with, the, with an example of a service. Uh, here we see by default, the delegation is turned off. So uh, the services basically cannot create, uh, cannot cr create their own hierarchy or migrate the processes uh, unless they want to confuse system D. And uh, here in this example, which we start with, we have uh, two, uh, two processes running of the service. One uh, with the directive exec start, that's the main, uh, main payload of the service. And then there is some uh, control process uh, that uh, is independent of the life cycle of the service. And it runs, it may run uh, in parallel with the payload of the service. So, yeah, so and this is this is, uh, this is how it looks like uh, within the C group hierarchy. We see that uh, both of these processes stay in one C group uh, and they coexist uh, side by side. That's basically yeah, what what we usually want. Uh, I, uh, yeah, in this example, I showed you that uh, there is the exact reload um, directive, but there are some others that also may coexist with the main payload. Uh, here they are listed. Uh, just note that the first two at the beginning are kind of special because actually they don't uh, coexist with the payload because they run before before the main process is started. So they may be full of, in, uh, that they have everything for themselves. But the others, uh, they have similar requirements like the exec reload in this regard. Now, uh, how it looks like with the uh, delegation from the point of the C group hierarchy. Uh, so here uh, we can see the top, uh, top C group is the delegate control that's created for the service. And then uh, there is the C group subkey control file where I denoted by RW that uh, write access is, uh, is given uh, to the possible user of the service so th they can modify modify what controllers are enabled in the subtree. And then we can see there are two uh, C groups created by the service itself for its own purposes. So here it's illustrated uh, by a service that creates one C group for its main uh, payload and second for the uh, some hel helper, uh, helper running together with it. Um, Yes, this, and this is created uh, by the service. Uh, just a note uh, that uh, 
uh, there are services uh, not so rare that run uh, as a root user. Uh, so in theory, they could do they can, they could do anything. Uh, they don't need this explicit delegation, uh, but it would just uh, make the thing uh, uh, unorderly, and it would be difficult uh, to get some overview of actually what belongs to what. So it, in the in the sense of uh, uh, sorry, uh, in the case of root services, this is rather like advisory to delegation. So now, now uh, we start, we, we are getting uh, uh, to some of the problems. Uh, uh, with the unified hierarchy, there is uh, one thing called uh, internal node constraint. That means that processes can only be placed uh, in the leaf nodes of the CU tree. And if a uh, system be behaved like usually uh, when the control command has to be started uh, together with the service, so it would put it under the main C group. Uh, but here is uh, indicated with the three exclamation marks, and it would mean uh, that uh, this would not be possible uh, because it violates the internal node constraint. Uh, what it violates means that it might not be actually possible to put the process there. So what system D does currently, um, it creates a wrapper uh, C group that uh, exists uh, uh, side by side with the custom C groups created by the service and puts the control, control process inside it and everything is fine. Uh, here I want to mention that the internal node constraint uh, does not hold universally, uh, that it can be actually violated uh, when it's, uh, it, it can be violated in such situations. Here uh, is, is an example of a service that may ask for the delegation, it specifies the delegation, but it does not, uh, does not consume this request. And uh, so that means that it does not create the hierarchy. You see that the process here is running right under the top C group, uh, but still in the situation system D creates the C group uh, for the wrapper C group for the control command, and it succeeds because the internal internal node constraint is relaxed in the situation when no controllers are enabled, and uh, that's actually yeah, the reason for the internal node constraint. I will get to that later. Uh, the reason is uh, related to controllers. Now. Uh, we, now the example is getting slightly uh, uh, more complex. Uh, yeah, here I just changed the name of the service uh, to RT, meaning that it has some real-time requirements. And now it has uh, two parts of its uh, payload. One is a sensitive one, second is auxiliary one. And uh, uh, the sensitive one specifies uh, the two CPUs uh, that it wants to use for its threads. Uh, here I talk about threads. Um, those would be some th threads with uh, real-time priority. And the auxiliary uh, has the one remaining CPU. Uh, so this is not so much different from the uh, previous example, uh, still the delegated subtree. And now we have heard, you have heard that you are doing something with threads. Uh, so uh, the Unified hierarchy uh, is slightly different when it comes to threats. Uh, it's uh, the reason is the reason is now it comes uh, to it uh, that there are some controllers that uh, support threading and some controllers that don't support threading. For example, the memory controller uh, cannot support threads well because uh, the whole memory space is shared by the threads, and it would uh, make no big sense uh, to manage individual threads of one uh, memory space uh, in, uh, independently. So we have uh, threaded and non-threaded controllers. And basically, the non-threaded controllers remain remain uh, enabled in the C3, uh, in the higher levels of the hierarchy. Uh, we would call such C groups that they are domain, uh, domain uh, uh, they are domain for the resource. Uh, uh, so they are domain threaded in this picture. 
and uh, the threaded mode is enabled only in the C groups that are below it. And it, for these C groups, only controllers that support threading can be enabled. And uh, these C groups are explicitly marked as a threaded type, so that uh, individual threads can be migrated uh, independently. So uh, we have uh, this was the service as it was mentioned previously, but there is slight issue with this that uh, when systemd wants to start the control command as it is um, used to, uh, so uh, actually the control, the, the, the wrapper C group that's created uh, has uh, by default type that it's invalid because it was not explicitly explicitly switched to the threaded mode. So uh, the, the, the process of spawning the co control command fails uh, because uh, you, it cannot be migrated to this C group, which has invalid type. And also, this is a good example to also illustrate another problem that if uh, we somehow solve uh, the the threaded problem uh, for the con dot control C group, uh, it's uh, well illustrated with uh, such resources like the CPUs, uh, which is a resource that's not elastic, I would say, that we have to fit both the original payload and the control command together under one CPU. Uh, so here, uh, like we, we have reserved some CPUs for the whole service, but then the question is the control CPU, uh, which CPUs actually it would, uh, it should use and what happens with the guarantees for the, for the rest of the for the rest of the service. Like this is the extreme case of uh, CPUs uh, because of some other resources, uh, it, I, which I would call they are elastic, for example, like the memory. So it can somehow fit into that and compromise, uh, compromise, for example, the latencies. And so now, uh, so this was, uh, this were the motivation examples. Uh, and uh, now, here is a proposal of uh, some solution that uh, I was looking into, uh, and it's actually rather simple. Uh, there is a new directive. Uh, the name is just uh, added for the demonstration. Uh, there is double time. Uh, there's two times the word control, uh, which okay means like where in which control group we put the control process. And it allows explicitly specifying uh, both the C group for the control processes and for the payload processes. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah, the, we have the main, uh, from the initial example, we have the server command, the reload command, and uh, we see that in this case, when it's so, when it's so configured, the payload, uh, would be in its explicit C group, and we can move control command to its own C group. Uh, yeah, uh, the default um, here expressed in the syntax is basically what is what is currently possible. That is that control commands reside in the control uh, control C group, and uh, the payload remains under the top C group. Uh, but it can it can it can be specified. Uh, yeah, the payload wrapper uh, can be specified. And also, uh, I was talking about the threaded mode. Uh, so when it's necessary, the control, the control commands C group is switched to the threaded mode, so that the uh, the control command can be put into it, and it's not invalid. Uh, yes. So uh, uh, there is, for the reference, there is a, uh, a pull request number. I uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so this was the presentation of the solution. Uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah. Uh, here is an example, and how it can be used. For example, for the uh, currently existing uh, user instance uh, service that's uh, shipped with uh, System D, and uh, uh, we can see that uh, the original is a start command that starts the user instance, and the, and there is no exact reload command, and we could specify that it runs in the init scope. But here in this example, it means that it runs in the init scope under the system user system the user instance. Uh, so it's somehow put together with the 
main service of the subtree. Uh, yeah, just um, th th there are some other approaches uh, that might may come to mind. Uh, one of them would be to uh, have a fixed uh, fixed C groups for uh, such a delegated subtrees, where we would uh, separate the payload and the control commands uh, every time. That would look like at the first uh, first snippet. Uh, or another option would be to put every control command under the global scope, perhaps of the uh, system D. But all these two, they look weirder to me. And uh, I also considered a variant where we would just keep things as they are and somehow enable the threaded, uh, somehow uh, created a switch or directive for enabling the threaded delegation. But actually, the threaded mode cannot be controlled uh, on the level of uh, file permissions, for example, uh, it just can have, if, if the if the subtree has the permissions to create a C group, then they can switch it uh, to the threaded mode. So actually, I think th that wouldn't work well. Okay, uh, uh, we are getting now to the discussion section where there are some, uh, okay, uh, 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 here are some points uh, that's, that's our work discussing possibly or uh, yes. uh, time for questions uh, time for questions um, so <laughs> uh, one two so when I'm listening to this um, it is important to distinguish um, advisory stuff, like what is a good idea from what you enforce. And we, ha we had this idea of a single kernel, I mean, single writer in enforced by the kernel, and we dumped it because it didn't prove useful. Now, the kernel is enforcing this no parallel feds, parallel processes uh, and C groups idea. Mm. And uh, I mean, I know it is a good idea in general because you can do accounting cleanly, but also we are building ever more elaborate workarounds. So maybe instead the solution is to just drop this in the kernel and simplify the user space. So, um, the, I'm not sure uh, which... The kernel should allow uh, this semi-invalid hierarchy and it will just do the best results uh, management that it can in this setup. And if you want to have really good resource management, then you do uh, a clean setup. And the kernel just allows everything mm. because it already has to do this for the root C group. So um, it could just yeah. allow it for other C groups. But okay, I mean, it's still our responsibility to provide an execution environment for services so that they can do this cleanly. And right now they can't, right? Like, because you turn on delegation and specify exec reload, and we end up creating something for you that is just bullshit, that, that is not clean. And that's our responsibility. So we should fix that in system. Also, the comment to the roots group, uh, because that's what how it was with groups v1. So it's yeah, it's kernel somehow must have supported. But the example, for example, of the root C group, uh, so with typical layout of C group three, so there would be only kernel threads in the uh, in the root C group. So uh, I don't say that. I, what I want to say is that actually it's not well tested how it behaves if uh, there were some processes uh, in the root C group with um, their memory competing with some uh, children C groups. So. I think it's better not to go back to the V1 ways in this regard. Uh, yeah. I mean, if other people want to ask questions, then please go ahead. Otherwise, I can respond. But so when the system, the, uh, with the machine boots, you still have this situation where you have, well, no hierarchy, so everything is in the root, right? Yes. And then you start creating subgroups and, and move things there. I don't know. It, it's, it seems to me that, that we could just uh, provide a good enough environment. Sometimes we just don't care about the details of the accounting, and this will just make things simpler. Um, so uh, what I find interesting about this always is like 
you know, the, the recommended workflow for delegated services is that the first thing they do is they move themselves somewhere else, right? Um, uh, this is what, uh, like, can you go through the example? Like, um, yeah, the, the, the system need dash user one. The system need dash user one. Uh, um. Yeah, um, so I mean, uh, uh, this like you ha explicitly list your delegate control group, control control group init.scope, right? Init.scope is a C group that uh, PAD1 moves itself to, um, and system dashed user moves itself to. So, the, the what I wonder about is so you're already specifying where the stuff shall be put, why limit that to the control stuff? Um, uh, uh, maybe we should just have a setting um, like default control group or, or something like this or sub control group or something, which specifies for any process that system D invokes, regardless if it's a main process of a service or reload or whatever else, where it should be placed, right? And then it's a sub C group of, of the service C group, because that would solve the problem. And at the same time, make things less stupid that we always invoke a process that immediately needs to itself move somewhere else. I mean, uh, Christian added for us support that uh, we can fork off processes these days into a C group right, so that the stuff is never even accounted to the wrong C group, right? We currently don't make use of this for some reasons because glyph C and stuff, but um, it's kind of stupid that we then immediately break this because we require all the delegated payloads to be used of somewhere else, right? So uh, it appears to me by doing this approach but making it a little bit more generic that we just say default control group or sub control group and it applies to all of them instead of just the control ones, um, you not only solve your problem, but you solve the the other problem as well that everybody needs to move themselves first. Yeah, my, my comment to that would be that still I think we have to differentiate between the control commands and the main command because we rely on the main command that it creates the sub hierarchy. So we we but need. It, but it's I mean the the, the design of uh, PID one right now is that itself it lives in in a scope and it manages the hierarchy one up. Right, and this is kind of what we, what I would then do here as well. Like it's fully systematic. Like um, systemd dash dash user gets uh, spawned in a child C group, and it manages the level one up of that. But uh, Lena, what happens if the um, if you go back to the example with uh, with the CPU is the sensitive CPU one, that example? Yeah. So like here, if you were to have the ability to say default control group is blah, uh, where would the control group go? Would it go into because but that is, this is like I mean um, in in the model that I uh, I was suggesting that we just speci allow specifying uh, the default C, uh, yeah. C group where uh, system we put stuff uh, then of course there would be no dot control but there would only be um, uh, like the the one where the main stuff is or something like this and then it's up to uh, the service to set, set CPUs on that thing and it has full control like uh, what it which CPU it wants to assign that right but if it wanted to do the same split where it has one sensitive one auxiliary and then control gets put into yeah, but, uh, whatever like, if I see this like which one is the the main process it doesn't like this example doesn't even show us anything that would be the main process but which one is right. the management process if you so will okay let's say um, a thread one is the management process right I mean badly named but anyway yeah. um, that would only be natural but if the management process in the upper one then uh, probably also the reload request um, uh, okay. should go there runs in the sensitive yeah. yeah I mean it's a bad example but yeah. no, 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 it's not. so to follow up on Leonard's idea uh, if we allow this then I think we should also allow specifying a whole hierarchy of C groups to be built for the unit so that the unit can only deal with moving processes around and not setting anything up. Well, but MKD is not that hard. I don't know. No, but you need to deal with supported and not supported uh, controllers and this and that and just make but it I mean, easy. It, for but the... it usually it's dynamic, right? Like system D dash dash user itself um, it creates C groups um, now and then and under a varying name. So it's, <laughs> it's not a fixed array, a sub array. It's the most dynamic thing in the world, right? With the exception of inner scope, which always exists. Uh, but if we allow it to make so very you need simple, like a free start. <laughs> so you need like pre exact start system D temp files create <laughs> with the list of all the C groups you need, right? Well, I, I think it would just make easier for uh, processes, for, for services that want to use delegation to use the delegation. Yeah, and I, I think this 
um, explicit explicit directive would make it easier because like it's it works as the default the default is like the current situation um, it adds the support for the threaded mode and if the service wants to specify something else if it has put, wants to put all its control processes into specific C group so they can specify the specific C group and also I just I didn't mention it but I think it's this is similar to what containers perhaps sometimes have to tackle that there is some kind of C, uh, exec exec a command that allows to join a container and run a command inside the container and it, this works in v1 hierarchy but in v2 it would violate the internal node constraint yeah, yeah. hello there is a workaround for this because like this this control mechanism basically when you attach to a, a container you set an whatever that it is you set an s to the c group namespace i think in any way you need to some sort of dance where you try to first you join a container you try to join the c group um, of the containers in it uh, process at first, which doesn't work because, for example, it gives you eBusy or whatever it is, and then what? Because you violate the internal. But if it, there is init process already, so we can join it. Yeah, yeah I, I think there is the problem if you want to. So PID one moves itself into init dot scope, right? So what we usually try to do now is we try to join. Uh, the root C group of the container, and if that fails because of eBusy, then we uh, try to look for init.scope, which is the one that system D, and then and then we join that, um, which mm -hmm. is there for some reason. I think we first need to try and join the root C group, or we we do because sometimes, for example, if you don't have system D, you have OpenRC or whatever, then it will usually work. But why can't you all just oh. always go for PID one? So, sorry, Leonard. Um, um, if you'd like to continue this discussion, you're free to uh, go to an empty room on this floor <laughs> and uh, you know keep going. 